So it's a research uh, funded by um, the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. Actually, I have uh, three, three scholarships for this. One was last year. It was about the migration from Germany to uh, Satumare County because uh, the Karoi uh, counts were in uh, Satumare County in uh, Kare is called uh, today the city. Uh, Kare coming from Karoi in Romania. Uh, and um, then I got a scholarship to go to Hungary to um, investigate the gardens in Hungary of these palaces. I will go to the next uh, map. I will not make it big because I'm afraid it will not work. So as you see here, I have a lot of things. I have the properties of the Karois. I have the castles built by uh, Miklos Ibul, who was the most renowned Hungarian architect of all times and who was a hard architect because he came to reconstruct in uh, Kare after um, the 1834 earthquake. And we have Josef Pithauser, who was uh, an architect from Würzburg, who came even before Ebel and who constructed for them. And of course, these palaces also uh, all had gardens. I did some uh, pre-research uh, uh, before the scholarship because unfortunately I was not able to go because the uh, pandemics came and I was supposed to go in April and May uh, uh, to Hungary to investigate the gardens. And um, then I applied for a scholarship within Romania, like the one from last year, uh, for the gardens outside Hungary. These are the gardens in Romania and Slovakia. And in Romania, there are three gardens. It's a garden of the castle in Care, which is a dentrologic park. The garden in um, Arad, Arad uh, Macha, um, who, uh, which is a um, botanical garden now and the garden in bulk where um, the guys go to hunting with uh, Syriaki Pinotron. Then there are two gardens in uh, Slovakia, uh, near Bratislava, at, uh, Stupava in uh, Slovakia, and uh, um, in uh, Palarikovo in Slovakia, and, uh, more to the east. And uh, there are six gardens in Hungary, um, in uh, Neumakoc, to the Radvani, on the, close to the frontier to uh, Slovakia in a natural protected area. Uh, Las Lotania, which was a, a pro formerly a revere for hunting and uh, which is uh, uh, now close to the public. Uh, near Sikesfehir was the place where uh, the kings were crowned in uh, Fehervar Churgu, then there is a garden in Budapest, which is uh, very well documented, and I hope I didn't forget anything, but just to go short, so up to Jozef Karoi, which you see here, all counts of Karoi were in Kare, and then they got this uh, Swabian inhabitants uh, uh, connected to 1848, uh, they come to flourishing and to have much more property. So the three sons of Jozef Karoi, which were Istvan, Lajos, and Jörg, all established them somewhere. So Istvan made the garden of food. There now is an elderly place and it's not anymore as it was. Lajos in uh, this in Palarikovo in Slovakia and Jörg in Fehervar Churgo. Both in Fehervar Churgo and uh, food were uh, designed by an architect from uh, Vienna. And uh, then Istvan had the son with the garden in Fuziradvai. I mentioned Lajos, uh, the a son with uh, the other garden in Slovakia. And Gyur had uh, three sons, this one I forgot, Gyula in Paracsosvat, there is a hotel, so it's a hotel garden. Then uh, Tibor with uh, Macha and Balt, and Istvan who go to Nagykara. And even the next generation had uh, close to Fuseradvani on the Slovakian uh, frontier, the last Lutania Hulnohaza, and uh, the one from um, the son of Tibor in Nagymagoc, if we go back to the map, uh, Nagymagoc is here uh, down, so it's closer uh, to Romania. And I have some images. This is a dendrologic park with a castle in uh, Kare, which was also uh, subject of a film. I don't know if people saw it on uh, Netflix, uh, Princess Switch. This is a garden in Budapest, which is very well documented and it changed many times from 
uh, Baroque uh, to English park and so on, then the, it came the metro. And uh, Baroque was a model of uh, Franz uh, Rosenstingel, who built also in Carré and made plans there. And this is the garden of uh, uh, Fehervarchurgo, which is an English park, which I mentioned. Uh, actually, these four I visited so far, so in Carré, in Budapest, Fehervarchurgo, and Fort, where also photographing is uh, prohibited. And I hope it will go further. I hope that in the second half of the year, I managed to go and document those in Hungary, but for Russia's part, I don't have a uh, plan. And um, for uh, those in Romania and Slovakia, if I cannot travel, I will, uh, in Romania, I hope I can anyway, but in Slovakia, I have contact with scientists in Slovakia and we examine this as a cross-border landscape. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, we will um, uh, come back to you with, with comments and questions if there will be any. And we will continue now with the next uh, next presentation uh, uttered by uh, Mihai Onuts Rusen. Aspects of uh, artistic research within contemporary sculpture teaching and learning. Mr. Rusen. Uh, thank you. Hello to everybody. Uh, it's very clear that uh, the uh, the analog teaching in the creative uh, uh, domain, like uh, sculpture and visual art, arts, is not going to work on the um, on the classic way, the analog way, and strictly ex cathedra From the simple reason that we do not have access to a studio, so I encourage the students, uh, of course. Of course, I put uh, everything, all the information needed on uh, Google Classroom because it was uh, uh, the, the platform that we were advised to work with. Uh, so uh, I put everything there, like information, documentation, pictures, images, links, and so on. Uh, in the same time, I uh, assign them uh, the, the teams, okay, the uh, usual stuff to do on this course, but in the same time, I encourage them to generate their own uh, project, individual project, and uh, to follow, to explore their own artistic agenda. And uh, despite my uh, very low expectation, uh, based on prior, uh, on prior experiences in the, in the analog classes, let's say, in the studio activity, uh, I was very, uh, very nice surprise to see that uh, uh, this online uh, procedure, okay, based on artistic research, uh, just enhance their, their creat creativity and their uh, interest in, the, in, uh, in, in this field. Uh, some of the projects were uh, really outstanding in... Um, regarding uh, 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 the student's ability to generate uh, concepts, to develop those concept, concepts, and to obtain uh, remarkable results. So in my opinion, uh, in the contemporary context, I mean, after COVID, and we, we will all have to adapt to those new realities, uh, so uh, this approach of artistic research, which encourage uh, the students' creativity and uh, enhance uh, their powers, their creative powers, their ability to make choices for their uh, uh, route to study this, let's say, uh, not exactly creative, but... Uh, uh very individual uh, approaches in the visual Not arts especially in sculpture your time is starting yes. okay so uh, it's it's is no problem uh, uh results are, are in my presentation and the presentation is available on the conference document so let's could say that uh, from my opinion uh, I was able to identify also, uh, a solution 
to continue online even after COVID uh, our uh, didactic activities. So I rest my case. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, because of short time, we are continuing uh, with the presentation of Henrietta Torcos and Anka Manuela Egerel, Outdoor Education and its Influence on Successful Involvement of Pupils in Social Life. Yes, um, hello, I'm so glad to see you all. I've been here uh, since this morning and I already feel that I've learned so many things from all of the sessions. And I'm going to be really, really short in my presentation because I have a full presentation on YouTube, a whole video about uh, this article and about this research. So I'm only going to say that um, I'm so glad that um, regarding outdoor education, I am the first one from the west of our country be preoccupied by this very important, we consider very important subject uh, in preschool, primary school, and uh, we even want to introduce it in uh, our university. And um, during this um, article and this research, we have uh, observed that um, outdoor education has so many benefits. And uh, the most important one that we have uh, tried to analyze in this uh, present article was the one that um, influences the, 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 the smoother involvement of pupils in social life and in the work field, of course. So um, one of the main objectives of the study was to find out what, at what extent outdoor education can develop social competencies in preschools and primary schools from uh, Arad County. And um, the results were actually great and it would have been even more greater if teachers would uh, have more knowledge on these uh, two dimensions. One of them, the outdoor education and the correct use of it. And the second one, the social education or education for society. So the overall results showed the importance of introducing outdoor learning activities in the former education, uh, even starting from the, the most young ages. But in order to develop social skills at the, the level of group cohesion, self-esteem level, self-discipline, taking care of others and taking um, others into account, creating a better social uh, climate. And one of the most genuine preoccupation of the human community and of the educational systems throughout the world is to create adaptable members of the society through education. And this can only be possible through the correct use of those learning tools that can develop certain, but also holistic competencies. So if you want to find out more about uh, our research, please check the video on YouTube because it's um, a more holistic presentation of it so I don't want to waste any more time. You are great thank you for being so receptive on on this uh, technical uh, requirements. Um, if you agree we will continue with the presentation of Ramona Elena Rotaru. Uh, Ramona are you with us? Can you present your paper here? Uh, it's a paper from a previous um, um, section uh, she couldn't present uh, her paper in the previous section, so if you agree, you can present it here uh, right now. I will be short and concise because uh, all my presentation is posted on the YouTube channel and uh, during um, problems, techniques, I didn't uh, have the chance to log in the first session. So thank you. Uh, my name is Ramona Elena Rotaru and uh, I am a teacher for primary school children. And uh, starting from uh, 2019, I am currently a PhD student at uh, Moldova State University. Well, my research for the uh, current scientific uh, conference it deals with uh, stimulating primary school children's creativity. Uh, through promoting this kind of uh, creativity uh, development in education, primary school uh, children uh, we learn how, how to develop their um, uh, skills and strategy that actively stimulates their um, uh, creative thinking and uh, problem solving education, which are uh, a few of my keywords in the current study. Um, first of all, um, these kinds of uh, solutions which I uh, search for represent an important part of uh, the global economic future because uh, quite a big percentage of the, the world uh, 
highlights, I think, the, the importance of stimulating primary school children's uh, creativity. Well, um, the relevance of uh, children's creativity for social development, I think, it's also pointed out as the highest moment of uh, our um, progress in um, educational system. And uh, in my opinion, opinion, the top creative thinking skills are analysis, open-mindedness, problem solving, solving and organization and communication. Well, uh, CPS, uh, which means uh, creative problem solving, is, um, is a method of approaching a problem or a challenge in a very unique style, in a more imaginative way, we can say. And it's a process uh, which uh, helps that you can redefine the problems and the opportunities you face come with, with um, new, innovative and um, skills, solutions and so on. Um, uh, Alex Osborne uh, noted that the uh, two distinct kinds of thinking uh, are essential of being creating. The first one was uh, the um, divergent thinking, uh, which standed for generating lots and lots of options, of ideas. And the second one, uh, the convergent thinking, which standed for evaluating options and making uh, decisions, I can say. And uh, in my opinion, I, can, I want to say that creativity simply means being able to, to come up with something new for children, first of all. And therefore, creative thinking is the, the ability to consider something. Uh, I give here an example, um, a conflict between children, a group project, or, or in a new way. They, they can find a new... Uh, uh, idea or a new uh, solution for the resolving of the problem. Uh, well, this is a brief from my entire Thank presentation. You. And it's still in progress. I didn't finish it yet. yet. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I think uh, due to technical aspects, we should uh, uh, end the session now. Uh, it, it usually should uh, end at... Um, to in 10 minutes, but we are uh, closing now and even we had no time to discuss it uh, um, uh, in a more than large um, manner. You can do it on YouTube uh, by commenting to the, to the video uploaded or uh, even create network, right? Yeah. See you all and um, let's meet again at the next session. See you. Yeah.